Like most Christians, I'm very skeptical when I hear of someone in Hollywood coming to faith in Jesus. But I sat up and took notice when I read a recent interview that Denzel Washington did with the New York Times, where he spoke of the importance of reading the Bible. His 2018 movie called Equalizer 2 contained, according to reviews, 24 uses of the F word and many other profanities. Before we look at what he said in the New York Times interview, let's look at Luke 9.62. No one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. If we decide to follow Jesus and look back like Lot's wife, the Bible says we are not fit for the kingdom of God. But up to 90% of today's converts fall away from the faith. They don't just look back, they go back so something was radically wrong. The scriptures tell us that those who fall away from the faith are like a dog that returns to its vomit or like a pig that goes back to wallowing in the mire. But a genuine convert puts his hand to the plow and doesn't look back because he's fit for the kingdom. The way to cut back on these false converts is to simply do what Jesus did. Open up the Ten Commandments to show the nature of sin and then preach repentance and faith in Jesus. When sin is seen in truth, then the necessity of repentance becomes obvious. Instead of proclaiming the gospel biblically, Modern evangelism tells sinners they've got a God-shaped vacuum in their heart, that God has a wonderful plan for their life, or He wants to make you a winner. And then with every head bowed and eye closed and music playing, they are emotionally manipulated to make a decision for Jesus in what's commonly called an altar call. That's why so many fall away from the faith and why there are so many false converts within the church. Tears among the wheat, foolish virgins among the wise, bad fish among the good, goats among the sheep. I've often sadly joked that America is filled with millions of people who have made decisions for Jesus when they were 6, 16, 25, 34, and they've never come to a point of genuine conversion. You gave your life to Christ. At what age? Well, a couple of three times, you know. <laughs> you, you had to make sure. You had that. to make sure. Okay, well, I, I, gave it, I gave it up. You know, early on, I was like, shoot, this is it. Then I was like, and this is, I'm laughing, but in 1981 or 82, when it came time to come down to the altar, I said, you know, this time I'm just going to go down there and give it up and see what happens. But I wasn't ready to live it. Ha. Ah. I wasn't ready to live it. That was 90, I don't know how old I was then, but I wasn't ready to live it then. And that was Denzel Washington's bumpy experience of Christianity. But it seems that the tragic death of his parents and the pandemic have changed everything. Seven, having just buried my mother, I made a promise to her and to God to do not just to do good the right way, but to honor my mother and my father by the way I live my life the rest of my days on this earth. There's an old saying, you never see a U-Haul behind a hearse. Amen. You, know, you can't take it with you. The Egyptians tried it. All they got was Rob. I just want to be in that number when the saints go marching in. That's what I want. This is what he told the New York Times in a December the 4th, 2021 interview titled Denzel Washington, Man on Fire. I'm a God-fearing man. I try not to worry. Fear is a contaminated faith. The Bible says in the last days we'll be lovers of ourselves. The number one photograph today is a selfie. It seems that Denzel has finally been brought to the Sadeva's knees, become serious about his faith, and it looks like he may have seen the importance or the value of having a blameless testimony. I certainly hope so. Now watch this. And I'm so honored that you've listened to me. So you're going to think about what we talked about? Yeah, I mean, a conversation like this would always be impactful to anyone. What's the biggest selling book of all time? I would think it would be the Bible. Right. Yeah. Are you familiar with the Bible verse, the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which is lost? I went to a Christian school. Are you lost? Sometimes I believe I am, yeah. So the Son of Man has come to seek and to save you? <laughs> that, that might be true, yeah. Do you think you're a good person? I like to say so, yeah. My problem is that I believe you're in great danger, but you don't realize it. Do you believe you're in great danger? No, not right now. Can you be honest with me? Sure. How many lies have you told in your life? Quite a few? Yeah. I'm going to take you through the Ten Commandments to show you your danger. So what do you call someone who tells lies? A liar. So do you still think you're a good person? Yeah. Have yeah. you ever stolen something? When I was a kid, I 
probably stole a few things, yeah. So what do you call someone who steals? A thief. So what are you? Uh, I guess I'd be a thief. No, you're not. You're a lying thief. Yeah, I'm now, a lying thief. Now, do you still think you're a good person? Yeah, I do. Have you ever uh, used God's name in vain? Yeah. Do you love your mum? Of course I do. Would you ever use her name as a cuss word? Hit your thumb with a hammer. You could say S-H. Would you substitute her name and the place of that filth word to express disgust? Uh, probably not. I don't think it would be satisfying, though. Yeah, it wouldn't be as satisfying as using God's name in yeah. its place. Yeah. And that's what you've done. You've taken the holy name of God, that godly Jews won't even speak because it's so holy, yeah. and you've substituted for that S word, and he's the one that gave you your mother. He gave you your eyesight, your hearing, your brain, your taste buds, the ability to enjoy good music. He's lavished his kindness upon you, and you've taken his name and used it in that way. Do you know what that's called? Is that blasphemy? Blasphemy. Yeah. Punishable by death in the Old Testament. Yeah. Do you still think you're a good person? I still do. Jesus said, whoever looks at a woman and lusts for her has committed adultery already with her in his heart. Yeah. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Of course I have. Have you had sex before marriage? Yeah. Do you know what causes death? No. Death is wages. The wages of sin is death. Ever heard that? Yes, I have. Death is what God pays you in for your sins. It's like a judge in a court of law has a heinous criminal. He's murdered three girls after he raped them. And the judge says, you've earned the death sentence. This is your wages. This is what's due to you. This is your payment. Yeah. And sin is so serious to a holy God, not to us. Who doesn't lie? Who doesn't steal? Who doesn't blaspheme? Who doesn't lust or fornicate? But it's so serious to God, He's given you capital punishment for your sins. So here's that summation. I'm not judging you, but you've told me you're a lying, thieving, fornicating, blasphemous, adulterate heart who is self-righteous. That is, you say you're a good person, but it's obvious you're not. You're like the rest of us. Yeah. So can you see you've earned your wages? I still think I'm a good person. I... You're going to hang on to that? Yeah. So you I mean, think a lying thief is a good person? When did you last look at pornography? This morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, can you see that there's a standard that you've got of, of righteousness and a standard of God's righteousness? And God's morally perfect. When he says good, he means morally perfect in thought, word, and deed. Mm. If you hate someone, the Bible says you're a murderer. That's how high God's standard is. Mm. And your problem is that you don't see your danger, and I do. If you died today and God gave you justice, you know you're playing a bit of basketball, if your heart gave out, and I said, man, he died young, didn't realize he had a weak heart. No one knew he looked healthy. Yeah. Man, you're in eternity and God will damn you. He'll give you justice. And the Bible says all liars are their part in the lake of fire. My ally is your conscience. That is, God's given you a conscience that's independent of your will. When you do something morally wrong, it accuses you. When you lie, it says that was wrong. When you steal, and you can you can deny the voice of conscience if you wish, but that's like taking the batteries out of your smoke detector. So that keeps going off and annoying me, setting alarms, but you take it out, it's there for your good. I'm hoping your conscience is doing its duty and saying, man, you're in big trouble with your creator. If you want to live forever, if you don't want to be damned, you better obey the gospel. Have you ever heard the gospel? Yeah. yeah. You have? Yeah, I mean, I grew up going to church and everything. Okay. Yeah. Explain it to me. Well, I wouldn't be able to explain okay, it. To let me let me let me give you my take on it, yeah. and it might click. You never know, because there's something in you that says, "Oh, I don't want to die." And when you said you weren't afraid of dying, I knew you weren't telling the truth, because the Bible says every human being is haunted by the fear of death all their lifetime. God's placed eternity on our heart. There's something in us that says, "Life is precious. I want to hold it." And Jesus said, "If you seek to save your life, you're going to lose it." So here's the gospel. And it may give you a different perspective that you can hang on to. Most people know that Christ died for our sins, but they don't know this. The Ten Commandments, that which we've just looked at, is called the, or are called the moral law. You and I broke the law. Jesus paid the fine. Do you remember his last words on the cross just before he dismissed his spirit? He said three very profound words. He said, it is finished. It is finished. Why did he say that? It's a strange thing to say when you're dying. But he was saying the debt has been paid. You and I broke the law. Jesus paid the fine. John, if you're in court and someone pays you fine, speeding fines, the judge can let you go. He can say a stack of speeding fines. It's very serious, but someone's paid him. You're out of here and can do that which is legal and right and just. And God can legally dismiss your case. He can let you live forever. He can take the death sentence off you, all because Jesus paid the fine in his life's blood. 
He even the scales. That's what that death was about. That's why he came, so that you could find everlasting life and not be subject to death. Man, you've got death written all over you, you know, until you come to Christ. Then Jesus rose from the dead. It was impossible for, for death to hold him, the Bible says. And if you'll simply repent of your sins, let go of them, say, God, I've been doing things I know are morally wrong. I've been feasting on unclean things, you know, pornography and having sex out of marriage and lying and stealing and blaspheming your name. I'm so sorry. And the way to find sorrow was to look what it cost God for your forgiveness. He became a human being, suffered and died on that cross. The wrath of God came upon him so it wouldn't have to come upon you. And if you'll repent and trust in him, God promises he'll remit your sins in an instant and give you a new heart with new desires. That's the personal miracle that God will give you so you love righteousness. So you won't do that which is wrong, you want to do that which is right. Do you remember the first and greatest commandment? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. That's what God requires of you. And you're like the rest of us. You've gone astray and you've loved sin and walked with your back to the God that gave you life. And if you'll turn to him, he'll give you a clean heart that loves righteousness. And he'll grant you everlasting life as a free gift. Do you think I'm telling the truth? Yeah, I, of course. Yeah. yeah, Man, I wouldn't lie to you. You know, this is yeah. so important. And I'm so honored that you've listened to me. So you're going to think about what we talked about? Yeah, I mean, this uh, conversation like this would always be impactful to anyone, I feel like. I believe in, like, signs, you know, like miracles, maybe something of a greater power coming to me, you know. Well, I prayed before I came to you. I didn't, didn't think anyone would be out today because it's so cold. Mm -hmm. And here you are, and, and I believe God's hand is upon you, and he doesn't want you to be subject to death. He doesn't want you to end up in hell. The Bible says he has no pleasure in the death of the wicked. It's his will that all repent and come to Christ. So are you going to get right with God? Are you going to repent and trust in Christ? I mean, it wouldn't be an easy thing of clicking a switch on and off, you know, I feel like. Well, let me see if I can make it clear what's going on. You're like a man on the edge of a plane, 10,000 feet up. You know you have to jump. You don't have a parachute. And I say, you're going to put the parachute on? You say, well, that wouldn't be an easy thing to do. <laughs> no, yeah. So the best, thing, way, yeah. Yeah, the best thing I could do for you in that instance would be to hang you out the plane by your ankles for two seconds, and you'll come in and say, give me that parachute. Hmm. And man, if you could just realize how terrifying it would be if you were to die in your sins, worse than falling out of a plane and hitting the ground 120 miles an hour, death is horrific on this side, but wait to get to the other side. The Bible says all liars love their part in the lake of fire. No thief, no blasphemer, no adulterer will inherit the kingdom of God. And one thing that'll help you is if you can try and rid yourself of the thought that God is like that old man in the sky that's reaching over a cloud to touch fingers with Adam, that's, that's horrible. There's nothing like that. Think of lightning, the, the scariest lightning you've ever seen on the biggest, scariest cloud. And that's just part of God's creation and you have to face him on judgment day and you have used his name to cuss many times and so you should let the fear of God fill your heart because the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom and the scriptures say through the fear of the Lord men depart from sin so it's not a matter of you saying boy it'd be a difficult decision to make it's a matter of you thinking I'll have to give up pornography and I love it I have to give up fornication with my gorgeous girlfriend and I love it mm. but that's your choice yeah. everlasting life or the pleasures of sin for a season. Can you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah. think of why I'm talking to you like this. Man, I'm pleading with you as though you're you know, on the edge of a cliff, walking forward blindly, and I'm saying, turn around, turn around. This is your soul. This is your eternity. Remember the words of Jesus? Watch it a prophet a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul. So you're going to think seriously about what we talked about? Yeah. Yeah. I just did my best to hang you out the plane by your ankles, <laughs> to put a little fear of God in your heart so you really say, this, this is such a serious business. This is my precious life, more precious than my eyes. This is my life. Do you have a Bible at home? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Would you be embarrassed if I pray with you? No, no, of course not. Your name is Johnny? Johnny, yeah. 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 Father, I pray for Johnny. Thank you for his open heart today. I pray he will think seriously about what we talked about. I pray you'll think about his secret sins, the things done in darkness, and the fear of God will fill his heart, and he'll depart from sin and fling himself upon the Savior, upon Jesus. 
and find everlasting life because you're rich in mercy, because you're good and kind. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell and make sure you don't miss the Living Waters podcast. The Evidence Study Bible will give you everything you've ever wanted to know about subjects such as the theory of evolution, as well as valuable information about cults and different religions, atheism, and biblical archaeology. It also contains hundreds of quality quotes, fascinating articles, amazing scientific facts in the Bible, and so much more. It even includes answers to 200 of the most commonly asked questions of the Christian faith. The Evidence Study Bible will thoroughly enrich your trust in God and in His precious Word. Get yours at livingwaters.com. Approaching a stranger is a little bit scary for most of us. That's why we've produced the Starter Kit. It contains four of our most popular gospel tracks. This is 101 of the world's funniest one-liners. These really are funny, and the gospel is hidden way inside. It's so easy to give out. You simply say, this is 101 of the world's funniest one-liners. It'll cheer up your day. This is the good person test. It's exactly what I say to people in comic form. And who can resist a comic? This is the Ten Commandments coin with a gospel on the back. I tossed a handful to teenagers once on a sidewalk and watched them fight over them. It's a great gift to give to anyone. And of course, our ever-popular million-dollar bill. Just say, did you get your million? And watch people's faces light up. There's a total of 350 tracks in the starter kit. Get yours today at livingwaters.com.